21st century is defined by wicked problems. Wicked problems are composed of multiple stakeholders with conflicting agendas and outcomes that have the potential for existential impact. Wicked problems aren't just complicated, they are complex. Complexity is defined as an environment in which you have diverse, willful actors who are both interconnected and interdependent. A small ripple in one part of the system can have outsized impacts across the other parts. Because actors, including malicious actors, are adaptable and willful, what works to confront threats today may not work tomorrow. This complex environment also includes convergence. Convergence of brand new variables, advances in data science, the algorithms that run and track our digital lives in artificial intelligence, in cyber smarts and cyber hacking, and these are converging with advances in bioengineering, some of them aimed at the human form, and the dangerous shifts in the climate of our planet, in addition to the risky congestion of space debris traveling the same orbit as our most critical satellites. In order to address the multifaceted complexity of 21st century problem sets, we must have teams of problem solvers that are equal in their dynamism, sophistication, and diversity. In order to build those, we need an evolution in higher education. Training in one major equips students to deal with difficult, even complicated problems within one sphere. It doesn't train them to think dynamically across problem sets. It doesn't equip them to deal with complexity and convergence. And it doesn't prepare them to think strategically about the most pressing problem sets of our day. General education courses are the right first step. But students need cross-training after acquiring some expertise in their own majors. And they need the opportunity to apply an interdisciplinary problem set to real-world problems. This is the grand experiment that we have been embarking on. Utah State University has the first in the nation Center for Anticipatory Intelligence. Students are recruited from all across campus. Aerospace engineers and art historians, biologists, computer engineers, data scientists, electrical engineers, philosophers, global communications majors, international relations majors, mechanical engineers, soil scientists, all of them converge in a classroom made up of 35 different majors, combining to produce powerful problem-solving teams and blossoming for us in our CHI cohort the dynamism that we seek. As juniors or brand new grad students or seniors, they enter a mix with PhD students, working professionals, all in the same classroom, fusing their expertise to tackle wicked problem sets. Every week, we toss at them the toughest issues humanity is facing, the ones making the news and the ones not yet making the news. I don't know if it will make you smile or wince, to know that three months before the pandemic hit, one of our students completed a paper on a zoonotic novel virus creating a worldwide pandemic. His classmate completed a paper looking at our medical supply system and the choke points that would prove problematic in a regional or global crisis. Now, these students were celebrated as prophets in their own time and interviewed on the radio, and as I tell most observers to our program, you better hope that not all Kai students are prophets in their own time. 
And don't predict the events of 2021, because I've got a paper on a solar flare wiping out the electrical grid for six months, one on cyber hacking of the Air Force's vaunted F-35, and at least three on CRISPR technology or the melting of permafrost producing the next biological weapon. And that's just a few of them. So the point of threat analysis is not to predict with laser accuracy the exact time or place of the next emergent threat, but rather to image through multiple plausible scenarios that could emerge based on the convergence in our complex landscape, and then design strategies of resilience to deal with them. We defined resilience as the ability of either material systems or humans to take a blow and bounce back while still maintaining core integrity and function. Even better, to receive a blow, learn from it, and emerge in better form. We anticipate threats so that we can be more resilient in the face of them. There's no sense seeing threats coming if you're not going to project their impact and use the time it buys you to build resilience in the infrastructure of your own society and in the people around you. Part of the brilliance of an interdisciplinary cohort is the innovation that it produces. We built this resilience framework by crowdsourcing ideas from our own students. They reached into their own majors and beyond to collect material surrounding resilience. We then amassed that material and looked for patterns of robust concepts that proved sound and useful when applied to either material systems or the human governance over those systems. The result is this complex resilience framework that our students use to strategize and think through the ways in which we can prepare for and confront even monumental threats. When we started this interdisciplinary experiment, we expected better problem-solving outcomes. Our teaching team has significant collective experience across the intelligence community and national security industry. We knew strong interdisciplinary teams was the right move, an essential move in higher education. So we expected the better problem solving. What we didn't expect was the love. We thought that bringing together students of really diverse backgrounds, diverse ages, diverse life experience, and diverse thinking sets and problem-solving skills, and putting them in one classroom was going to be awkward, and awkward for a while. As my co-founder, Matt Barrett, likes to say, it would be like showing up to a family reunion, but it's not your family. We were wrong something pretty magical happened. Because the wicked problem sets these students are forced to tackle, they see nearly immediately the value of the diverse experience that each brings to the table. Looking at the complexity of the 21st century landscape, they recognize their own deficits and know that they can't solve the problems alone. They are thrilled to lean on the expertise of their peers. Rather than feeling competitive with peers that think like them and were trained like them, they experience gratitude and connection to partners who bring something entirely different to the table. They need each other, and they know it. It's their diversity that creates unity. Across the year the students spend together in a Kai cohort, we watch what begins as mutual respect develop into genuine affection. They know they are smarter, more effective, more prescient together. By fusing expertise, they become much more powerful than the sum of their parts. But perhaps most importantly, they build community. 
They are living the very resilience they mean to convey to others. In the middle of what seemed to be the toughest stretch of the pandemic last fall, we asked one student how she was doing. Her response, I am thriving. She recognizes herself as a valuable and critical contributor to a team. She knows her value and she loves her team. We knew that combining intellectual forces would create problem solvers. I'm not sure we knew that it would create joy. The benefits of an intentionally interdisciplinary education in anticipating our most important challenges in this 21st century and creating a highly resilient community that is bound by genuine affection is not just nice, it's the necessary ingredient to bounce back from massive disruptions to effectively confront malicious attacks, to heal the planet, and to heal our communities. It's time for an evolution in higher education. Thank you.